Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. If you recall from the C-Sharp Fundamental Series on Channel 9, the C-Sharp compiler will take your code in the project and will compile it into a .NET assembly. Now, the end result is usually an executable file with the file extension .exe, at least for those simple console applications that we're, we're, we were building in that series. And while we worked exclusively with the debug version of the app in Visual Studio, simply by changing the solution configuration to release from debug to release, we could then create a version of our assembly suitable for deployment on another user's computer, as long as they had the same version of the .NET Framework runtime installed on that computer that we used to compile our code into the .NET assembly, all right? So in this lesson, I wanna talk about deploying our Windows Phone apps that we build to a physical device running the Windows Phone 8 operating system. Up until now, we've merely been deploying to the phone emulator. The compilation and deployment step is completely automated for us, and we might not be aware of how the program is packaged and installed into the emulator. Furthermore, we're going to want to understand the way in which the app is packaged because we'll want to undoubtedly deploy the app to a physical phone device for testing, and we'll want to package the app so that we can submit it to the Windows Phone Store to be approved and included there for download or for sale. So our game plan in this lesson is, first of all, we want to kind of peek underneath the hood a little bit and see what happens whenever we compile our app. What does Visual Studio create for us exactly? And maybe by doing that, we can learn a little bit about the deployment process as a result. And then secondly, I want to actually deploy our, our Pet Sounds app to my phone. I'm itching to get it on my phone so that I can... I can annoy my family and friends <laughs> by uh, clicking the duck sound all the time, or maybe my cats by uh, clicking the, the meow sound and they see what their reaction is. Anyway, all right, so you know, up to this point, every time we hit the little run button on the, the toolbar, we hit F5 on the keyboard, uh, Visual Studio is creating a debug version of our app. Now, if you recall from the C Sharp Fundamental series, it creates a bin slash debug directory where it places the .NET assembly as well as any additional files that are required for the app to run. So let's take a look in our own uh, documents, Visual Studio 2012 projects folder, and we're gonna look in the pet sounds folder, and we'll drill down to the pet sounds subfolder, and you can see there's a bin directory here, and there's also a debug directory. And then there's some folders. You can see that they match the ones in our Visual Studio project, like the Assets folder, the ES folder for the Espanol version of our app uh, appresources.res.x file, and a uh, Properties folder. And then there's this um, app manifest.xaml file and a pet sounds debug any cpu.zap file. Now that zap file if we were to take a look at it. Actually, it's here in the little descriptive area. It's six megs. Now, I happen to know that file extension is a deployment package. It's a file that contains all of the files and configuration that's required to deploy our app on the Windows Phone 8 OS. And since it's so large, I suspect that it not only has our Pet Sounds DLL, which is only 15K, but it also has probably the entire assets directory with all of our sounds and tiles and so forth, all right? So let's have a little bit of fun here. What I'm gonna do is actually go to my desktop and I'm gonna drag, or actually I'm just gonna right click and select copy that zap file onto the desktop so I have a copy of it now. And I'm just gonna work with this copy. I'm going to um, right click and select rename this file and I'm going to rename the .zap file to a .zip file, all right? And it makes, says, are you sure you want to change the extension? It might become unstable. I'm pretty sure we want to change that extension just to take a look at it. So now it's no longer a .zap file, but it's a .zip file. And uh, let's do this. I'm going to double-click this file to view its contents. And as you can see in Windows Explorer, we see the content of it. And I guess the first takeaway here is that a zap file is actually just a fancy zip file containing essentially whatever we saw in the bin slash debug directory of our project. 
And so if we were to drill into the asset subdirectory, we can see that there is an audio subfolder and a tile subfolder. And if we drill into that, there's an animal subfolder and then there's all these WAV files. Uh, and so, uh, you know, here's all the WAV files that we copied into our project a few lessons ago, right there. So now let's back out of the, uh, out of that zip file back to the root. There we go. And I wanna see what's inside this app manifest.xaml file. So I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna select, whoops, actually I wanna see this one. Right click and I'm gonna select open and it opens it up in Notepad. You may have to choose Notepad as an option. I've already done this once so it knew that I'm, I wanted to you know, open it using Notepad. Um, but at any rate, this WM app manifest.xml file is simply XML. Just there's a lot of it. In Visual Studio, this complexity is hidden from us through a friendly designer a page in Visual Studio that restricts the changes that we can make to the file. Uh, but the real question is, why does this thing exist in the first place? Well, the purpose of the WM app manifest.xml file is to introduce your app to the phone's operating system. It tells the phone which images to use as tiles on the start page. Uh, let's see, yeah, right here. It, um, it tells the phone uh, which capabilities to support. So for example, these capabilities, and we'll talk more about those later in this series. Uh, it also tells the phone the name of our, uh, the, uh, the name of our, of our app and the version number of the app and what screen resolutions we support and so on. Um, it, this is how we integrate our app into the Windows Phone 8 operating system and its ecosystem of apps. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. This zap file gets deployed to the emulator or to a physical phone and during that deployment process it unpackages all of the files including this WM app manifest file. Uh, the phone's operating system analyzes it and it determines which uh, icons it should use for its tiles, what the name of it is, what its capabilities are and so on so that when it shows up on our phone uh, the user then is able to run it and you know to see the tiles, the, I, uh, the, the name of the app uh, it'll give any warnings about the capabilities that of the phone it's trying to use and so on. Very cool. Okay, so the next thing that I want to try to do in this lesson is to deploy the app to my Windows Lumia 920 phone. Uh, and the rest of this lesson assumes that you already have a Windows Phone Dev Center membership. It costs $99 per year. Uh, and you can see I'm going to log into it here in just a moment. And you'll go to dev or developer.windowsphone.com. So if you go to the uh, publish option in the navigation for the Windows Phone Dev Center, there's this option to join the program and it will tell you uh, what the process of joining is. You'll have to um, click there to join. You know, you have to pay $99 and things of that nature. And I'll let you just work through that process. But in my case, I've already uh, joined so let's take a look at my account sign in and let's go to the dashboard and you can see so as you can see I have no apps you know I've made no money <laughs> no downloads uh, and just here some basic account information um, as well and this will become important a little bit later on as we want to publish our first app um, but at any rate, uh, what I want to do is just go down to the phones section. You have to register a phone uh, in order to test your app. So in order to deploy our, um, our Pet Sounds app to our phone, we're going to need to plug our phone into our computer using a USB cord that comes with the phone. And so I've done this many times before to transfer music or to charge the phone, but I've, I've never uh, done it with the intent of actually deploying an app to it. So what I wanna do is I'm going to go to Visual Studio and I'm gonna change from deployment to, uh, or debugging through the emulator to the device instead. And now I'm going to hit the run button next to the word device. And I'm going to hit an error pretty early on. And it says there were deployment errors. Do you want to continue? Yes. Uh, it failed to connect to the device as it is developer locked. 
For details on this, uh, go to that particular URL. So to remedy this, I'm gonna need to search for the Windows Phone developer registration app that was installed when I installed the Windows Phone 8 API on my computer. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go to the search charm on Windows 8 and I'm gonna type in uh, register and it'll be one of the first uh, apps that will show up in search. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and it opens up the Windows Phone Developer Registration app. Now, you can see, first of all, if your phone is, screen is locked, in other words, if you don't have, uh, if you have the lock screen on your phone, you're gonna need to uh, unlock it and then click retry. And uh, now it's identified the Windows Phone 8 device, click register button to unlock the phone. It's gonna ask me to sign in, and, and I've had this issue where I've had to do this twice in order to get it to work, so let's see if it happens again here. It'll give me an error message the first time, error logging into the Windows Phone Dev Center, but if you try it a second time, it usually works, and it's so consistent that I gotta think there's something to that, uh, why it's doing that. So if, when I log in a second time, it's trying to find it. Congratulations, you've successfully unlocked your Windows Phone. Now in the text of this lesson below where I've embedded this video, you're gonna see some edge cases, some other situations that might happen, like it's uh, the phone has been, um, uh, been used too many times and too many apps deployed to it. There's just a number of different error messages that you might experience. Uh, so be sure to read the rest of that text uh, below this video to get a full understanding of the different things that you'll need to be aware of before attempting to do this. But I'm gonna go ahead and hit close and then try to Deploy once again, another deployment error, continue, yes. Oh, it's pin locked. Again, I'm gonna to need to turn on the power, unlock the screen, and then click OK and try it one more time. And so here we go, it's installing the application. And now I'm seeing the loading screen. Oh, look at there, here we go. Here, maybe I should turn up the volume of this a little bit. There we go, and so will it quack? Yeah, and will it meow? No, it'll quack again. I'm <laughs> using a previous version of the app. Okay, but at any rate, uh, to exit out of the debug session, I'm just gonna do what I would normally do. I'm just gonna hit the stop debugging button, and now it returns me back to the phone's um, start screen, and uh, you know I can continue to develop and uh, and even though I stopped debugging on the, uh, the app on my device, the app is still present there and I can still run it even after I uh, unplug my phone. So I'm gonna unplug my phone from the computer and then I'm gonna go over and take a look. Can I find pet sounds here? Uh, yes, it's still here and I can still run it. All right, so I have it now on my phone, awesome. So each time I debug, it'll deploy the latest version of my app to the physical device just like it did in the emulator. Suppose that you wanna unregister your phone uh, for development for some reason, like you're gonna give it to somebody else. You can rerun that Windows Phone developer registration tool and it will identify the phone as being unlocked for development and it will provide an option to unregister the phone. Uh, also, if we were to go now and look and refresh this page out on dev.windowsphone.com, uh, you'll see my phone show up there, okay? And I can remove it from here or I can remove it using that utility, all right? All right, so uh, to recap, the big takeaway in this lesson was the composition of the deployment package. We looked at it just a fancy zip file, okay? We looked at the purpose of the WM app manifest.xml file. Visual Studio showed us this nice little designer, but behind the scenes is all this XML that's used by the phone's operating system to introduce our app onto the phone, all right? Uh, we looked at how to deploy our app to a physical phone device for debugging. Uh, we're still, we're able to set breakpoints and step through the code and it's running instead of in the emulator on our phone. We talked about registering the phone device to unlock it for, uh, for development purposes and then we can deploy apps to it at that point. Uh, we talked about briefly how to obtain a uh, Windows Phone Dev Center account, which is necessary before you go through that whole process. All right, so we'll pick it up in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.